guys, good morning. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. Manic rush this morning. Um, but we are here, we're good to go. Just wait for a few of you to join me before we crack on. Um, hope you've had a good few days. I haven't seen you since Thursday. Uh, today's Sunday, so the download on the website today um, are for the Sparkle Roses. That's what we're going to be using uh, to make some lovely pendants with this morning. Hi Linda, hi Joe. Sorry I'm a bit late everyone, couple of minutes. Um, Joanne says, morning Sarah, happy Sunday. Hope you're getting on okay with your uh, crocheting, Joanne. I got your message. Um, so hopefully that's going well. I'm glad you're enjoying it all. Good morning Maxine, Marcia, morning Margaret, oh morning Mum. Got two, uh, two Margarets. Morning, Edward. Hi, Alicia, Dorothy. Hope you've all had a good few days. So yeah, I haven't seen you since Thursday. Just as I finished the video, the recovery truck pulled up with John's van, bless him. Um, so he finished his, finished his shift at six o'clock and got home at 11. Poor thing. So we've had a good couple of days. We were doing a bit of DIY yesterday, painted another two rooms. So I've been super busy. My hair's all a bit wild. I just went out into the garden. Anyone else got the horrendous winds? Good grief. Our garden looks like it's been in a hurricane. It's absolutely crazy. Um, so, hope you're all staying safe, staying home. Everyone's doing okay. Good morning, everyone. Got loads of you. Right, so I'm going to crack on the things that we are using today. And I have some really important bundles to share with you. Um, because I don't know how much stock we have of them. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about it now. So that if you want to go and get it, you can go and get them and then pop back and you won't miss any of the makes. So these are what we're using today. These are the Sparkle Roses. Now we've got two different types of them. These are a 42 mil and I'll turn all of this down in a minute so that you can see them. Let me pick a lighter color so you can see. We've got the Sparkle Roses and as you can see, they are covered in crystals. They're absolutely beautiful. It's actually all resin, so it's a really nice lightweight, but you can see they've got this gorgeous sparkle on them. Now the roses have three holes in them. So two at the sides and one at the top. So I'm gonna show you how to make a bale for them or a connector today using our um, eye pins. These are the roses, now these are a pound. It's amazing value for money. Um, and there's so many different colors. I'll show you them when we turn down, but we also have the three point flower. Now these aren't in the Facebook category this morning. If you just type in um, resin flower, these will come up. You also have the three points and they are um, triangular in shape and they've got the same bales. So two on the side and one down the middle. Everyone's saying it's so windy. Um, my trees are almost bare. The garden is absolutely covered in just twigs and leaves. I guess it's given it all a good old clear out. Um, so they are the roses that we're going to use today. So they're the main feature of the necklace and I'm going to use eye pins to um, create bales out of them so that you can start connecting them in. Now, Kitty must love using these because the amount of samples that I've got here is insane. My desk is absolutely covered. So I'm gonna show you how to make little wrapped uh, loops, wrapped pins on them um, to make necklaces out of them. Like I said, once I've turned you down, I'll, uh, I'll show you all the necklaces that we've got so you can start creating these lovely details um, I'm also going to use pearls and some space to be sparkle spaces, so I'm going to show you that. But your free PDF download, so that's going to be for the sparkle roses, that's going to show you everything on there. So that will be using collops, crimp beads, tiger tails, eye pins, uh, jump rings. So if you need, um, and also how to do the wrapped loops, so if you want... Um, if you want your PDF printout for that, I have put the link in the video, um, but also um, I'm going to show you it all as well. So go and check out your baskets with those. Then also the bundles that we have. Um, I'm going to turn you down for this, actually, because I want to be able to show you the beads. Let me tidy up my desk a little bit first. Hold on. Um, there's so many different things I want to show you this morning. So I just have stuff everywhere. Let me move all of this out of the way. Okay, so let's turn you down. I hope you're all doing okay. I'm going to give, um, I'm gonna give you all um, some, I'll read all of the comments in a minute, but I just wanna show you everything first of all. Okay, so these are your three point 
uh, resin roses. So they are 40 mil in size, so they are quite big. So that's your three points. Um, I'll show you some of the colors here as well. Um, and then obviously we've got the 42 mil roses as well. So that's the difference between the two. Lots of different colors, all available individually. I mean, how amazing is that? I'm gonna put that one on a brooch back because I think that will be beautiful. Just, I've got like a wool coat that I wear. Um, <clears throat> actually it's in gray, so I might even do it in gray, but I just love that color. I, I suppose because it's a bit rose gold, um, but I love the black as well. I do wear a lot of black. I'm gonna pop one of those on a brooch back and have it on my coat. Um, so lots of different colors. These are the roses, okay? They're so pretty. Um, Oh yes, Linda, they are really pretty, great minds. Um, we're gonna make them into necklaces. So the things that we have um, that I'm gonna string them with are the sparkle spacer beads, which match perfectly to the roses and also the pearls. So let's do the sparkle spacers first. These are also available. There isn't a bundle for the resin, um, spacers but these are all available on the website and you've got the two different sizes we've got the eight and the six mil and they match perfectly to all of your roses i'm guessing kitty found these all at the same time as the roses and of course kitty being kitty look she's married them up perfectly so needed all the colors to be able to match them so you'll be able to pop onto the website and find the resin spacers, uh, sparkle, sorry, your resin roses and then the sparkle spacers that will marry up and match with them. So that's going to go beautifully. Okay, so you can go and find all of those. The real thing I want to get to is your pearl bundle for today. Good grief. Right, wait till you see this. We have six and eight mil pearls. My goodness me, this is monstrous. I should have laid it all out nice and pretty for you, but I wanted you to see the sheer volume. <laughs> so you actually get 20 colours, which are 40 strands, and they are 6 and 8 mil pearls. And these should normally be £50, and they are on the website today for £34.99 amazing value for money um diana is asking if they're smooth do you mean the the spaces and the crystals yeah they are um they're not jaggedy um when you're wearing them on your skin they're flat backed um you can you can feel the rhinestones on them you can feel them but they're not hard um because they are resin let me show you can you see that it's got all of the attachments it's got all of the little um crystals on there um but they are smooth it's, sorry about my finger I was doing some watercolor artwork yesterday and uh I was using alcohol inks as well cannot get it off my hands um yesterday was a messy day lots of painting um so Dan I hope that helps they are they are smooth to wear they're certainly not rough but you can feel the uh resin crystals on them okay so these are your beads oh the beads Diane says the beads um yes yeah, they are Again, you can see they have all of the resin crystals on them. It's, um, it's hard to describe it. They're not rough, but you can tell that they're they're bobbled. Um, but they're going to be super smooth on your skin. They certainly don't scratch, which is the main thing from your jewellery. Okay, so your pearl bundle today. Um, pearl heaven. Absolutely, Lucy. Um, $34.99 for 40 strands. Um, and it's normally £50. So that is amazing value for money. I'm going to pick some colours to work with now. I think I'm going to go grey. Um, let's go grey and silver because I want you to be able to see. So I'm going to pick my grey one. So you'll get the 6 and the 8 mils um, in your 20 colours. Okay, I'm going to move those over. So I'm going to show you how to make your bales first of all. Should we go grey? Let's go silvers. Um, I've got my pearls here. Um, what else do I have? Actually, oh gosh, this is this is the problem when you've got so much uh, to choose from. Hmm. Yeah, let's go silvers. Okay, we'll go silvers. Um, I am also going to show you how to make a handbag charm. So when I was on telly the other week, I had um, 
and it says beautiful definitely buy them <laughs> yeah go and check out your baskets now i don't know how much stock is on there um i know that simon allocates a certain amount every day for our facebook lives once that has gone they will go up to um the normal prices um so if you do want things go and check them out now i'll give you a couple of minutes before i start making um, the link is in the description of the video, but I am sure that Kitty or Simon will put it up as we are talking as well. Um, so you can go and check those out. I don't want you to miss out. Um, and then I shall carry on making. Okay, so I'm going to add in... <laughs> let's do a few of these. So I've got my six and my eight mils in my pearls. I've also got the six and eight mil in the uh, spacers. And then, haven't decided which one I'm going to use yet. Might even use both. I've got the um, 42 mil rose and then also the 40 mil three point rose as well. I'm going to use tiger tail. I've got some crimp beads, some collops, uh, eye pins. And I'm also going to use a handbag charm. Because I've decided I want one of these on um, a key ring. Um, so, yes, I was on Create and Craft uh, the other week and I was showing you we had the... Um, trapeze with crystals on there we also had some amazing handbag charms um so they would go beautifully with these as well okay we'll get going with these right i'm going to start with making oh d says um have done loads of these and they are gorgeous oh fabulous hope you got your stash out now you can start making with me um so i'm going to use flat nose pliers round nose pliers and my cutters and what we're going to do is use an eye pin to create a bail for these so i'm going to move this out of the way so it doesn't take too much focus from the video and i'm going to take an eye pin and what we're going to do is create a little attachment so um otherwise known as a bail to make um, this connectable to our jump rings, um, onto chain, anything like that as well. So, um, Sharon says, actually joined Facebook for these tutorials. Oh, amazing, not bad for someone over 50. Well done, Sharon. Um, yeah, it's great. Even if you don't use Facebook socially, it's so fantastic. Uh, for things like this at the moment, for your tutorials. We've been doing them for about seven weeks. Oh my goodness, it looks like my finger's mouldy, doesn't it? I'm sorry, I'm covered in alcohol ink. <laughs> um, I was using alcohol inks and watercolours to create a bit of artwork yesterday for the new bedroom um, that we've just finished painting for the spare room and I cannot get it off. Um, okay, so yes, we've had about seven weeks of these tutorials now. So um, well done, Sharon. You're going to have lots to be able to uh, to make now. Okay, so I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and I'm going to create, it's almost like a little coat hanger shape just at the top of my rose here. So can you see that? I've completely moulded it around the actual shape of the rose. And I like to put my... Um, I at the front of the rose as opposed to the back because it's going to give me a neater finish from the side that is going to be visible. So I've got that sort of coat hanger shaped finish and that was just using my flat nose pliers. So in around the top and then straight up. And then I'm going to hold that in place because it's a little bit wobbly at the moment. I'm then going to take the back of the pin and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So again, I want those kind of sharper angles so that it's going to give me a nice, neat finish. So I'm going to use my flat nose pliers. Can you see there? I've just completely replicated the shape on the back side. And then I'm also going to take the top and I'm just going to bend this to 90 degrees. And that will give you a really neat finish. It stops it from kind of looking so freeform. <laughs> Doris says, oh, you're a baby. Yeah, I'm nearly 75. <laughs> Amazing. No, um, no technophobes here. We're all managing to master these things. I'm not great with technology, so I'm just pretty impressed. I manage to do these videos every day. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, Sue says she'd love to see my artwork. Sure, I'm going to finish a few pieces today. I'd found some prints that I wanted to get, but it was probably going to cost me about £90 just to do three of them in the spare room. Uh, so I decided to give it a go myself. I'll share some pictures over on my Sarah Millsop page later on, if, the, if they're any good. There's a lot of tweaking to do with them yet. <laughs> but I'll see how I get on. Okay, so now we're ready to create a wrapped loop around here. And this means that it's going to um, beautifully hold on uh, to our um, 
crystal roses or our resin roses, I should say, uh, when we attach them onto our work. So you can see just by wrapping around there, taking those uh, round nose pliers, holding onto that wire, I could probably push that a little bit further down. And then I'm gonna take my uh, flush cutters Make sure you've got your flush cutters. Oh, Jane says she's got hers. Well done, Jane. Um, I'm gonna do this a few times as well, just in case anybody is uh, checking out their baskets and have missed these bits. But once the video is finished, you'll be able to go onto the Facebook page afterwards and catch up with the whole thing as well. So I'm just gonna pince that together using my flat nose pliers, just to make sure I don't have any jaggedy edges. And now my rose is connectable. So you can do this at many points. We'll do it again on one of these ones, just to show you that the, um, the round roses and the uh, three point roses are gonna be exactly the same technique. So you want to leave some space, so just a couple of mil so that you've got enough room to be able to wrap. And I've taken that all the way up to the top. So it's like a nice little, it's like a coat hanger um, shape. And we'll go in there and then we'll do the same on the back side. So bringing that wire, if you want it to be um, like a sharper point, so it's matching the front, use your round nose pliers, taking that all the way down to the uh, hook itself of the pin. I'm just going to use my flat nose pliers to bend that also to 90 degrees. Straighten this one up because I just moved that ever so slightly. I'm actually going to turn this loop sideways as well. So that when I uh, connect it on, my jump ring or my chain can run straight through. And then I'm going to take my round nose pliers. I'm going to move this down so it's right at the base. Can you see that there? Right at the base. So just position yourself in all the right places and then your wrapping will be easy. So I like to take, can you see how that's just tightened that up? Taking those round nose pliers nice and close to the loop itself, so to the body of the pin, and giving that a good twist. All the way round to the back. And then I can take my flush cutters, snip in as near to it as you can get. And then using your flat nose pliers just to pince in those little edges so you don't get a rough finish. And again, I'm just going to straighten that up. And then you've got a really nice wrapped loop. Let's get rid of that sharper little edge I can see just poking out. Let's cut that little bit off. I do get a bit of a perfectionist when I end up with pendants, you're gonna have a real visible finish. So there we go. And then you've got your lovely connector. So you can do that. Um, is there a hole to put the pin in through or is it easy to push through? Yeah, so you've got three points on these. So there's three holes, you've got two at the sides, and one at the top, well, there's normally three, maybe these ones only have two. So the rose has, uh, oh yeah, there's one at the top there. So the rose um, has three, one, two, and three. And then the triangular ones have at all the points. So nice and easy to connect into a necklace. So what we're gonna do is make a beaded necklace up on the tops, and then we're going to have uh, a little point coming down at the bottom. Okay, so we've got these ones. So these are connectable top and bottom. So let's let's add a little pearl into the bottom. So to add on a connector, I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom and um, I'll show you the difference between a head and an eye pin. So again, I've got my connector up at the top. I'm gonna replicate it and create another one down here at the bottom. That's too big, let's make that a bit smaller. There we go. So just molding around. You could even do this with um, a soft gauge wire if you would prefer. But as you can see, the pins are nice and easy to work with. And just once you've got that lovely, neat finish, you can see it's super easy to do. It's just a case of getting used to maneuvering and molding that wire. Oh, that's a nice neat one. I can feel how sturdy that is. 
And again, I'm just going to straighten it up so that it's facing the same angle as the top. Oh, that little bit is still annoying me. There he goes. Perfect. Okay, so we'll add a pearl down here at the bottom. So your difference between a head and an eye pin is that your eye pin already has this loop on it. So um, an eye pin is going to make it connectable top and bottom because when we add beads onto these, it's these loops that we are replicating. A head pin is going to be for your um, flush finish. So on the base of this, let's add on... Let's add on a small pearl and one of our little, I might just add a pearl on actually, let's just do a pearl. So I'm going to add a pearl onto the bottom so that it's going to tie in really nicely to the rest of the necklace, which we'll make in a moment. So take your head pin, pop your bead on, and then we're going to bend the pin directly above the bead to 90 degrees. Are the three point on the website? Yes, Angela, they are. They're not in the Facebook group. If you go to the search bar up at the top, just type in resin flower and you will be able to find them there. They're the same price as the roses, the ruler pound. Uh, so I've bent it uh, to 90 degrees. I've left myself just about a centimeter and I hold my thumb at the base of the pin. My finger is holding the bead in place and I have the pin facing up to the ceiling. And then I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm just going to ever so slightly, so teeny tiny movements, mould that pin around my pliers. Making sure that you have a closed loop down at the bottom like so. You could even, if you wanted to, you could even um, make a wrapped loop so that it's exactly the same. Uh, as your rose, which would be really nice. I've made this one quite big, but that will be okay. And then to connect them in, just take your flat nose pliers. You can twist that up, connect it onto your rose and twist it shut. And then you've got your lovely droplet down at the bottom there as well. So that's going to mean that you don't have um, a visible hole from your rose. OK, so that's going to be now our connectable link that we can add into our necklace. Now, this is the one that I wanted to add onto my keychain. So I've done exactly the same thing um, and I'm just going to use a jump ring so that this is the one that we made our little um, connector on. I'm going to use a jump ring to attach it on. In fact, it's already got a jump ring on here. So you can just use a pair of pliers, twist that open, connect on your rows and twist it shut, making sure you've got a complete closed connection. And I'm just gonna twist that loop. Can you see that because the loop is facing side to side, it's not gonna hang Perfectly. So if you just twist it and now you've got a really nice keychain as well. And because it's resin, you're um, not going to have it chip. It's going to be perfect for something um, like a keychain or a handbag charm because it's not a crystal. So it's not going to um, chip with your keys and such like um, if it's getting uh, banged. Um, Anna says, miss the size of the pearls and the beads you're using in the video. Can you tell me? Yeah. So the pearls that we have are a six and an eight mil bundle. The offer today is uh, 20 colours, 40 strands, normally 50 pounds. Let me just bring this in. Look at this. Normally £50, £34.99 for today. Um, I'm going to arrange these really nicely in a minute. We'll have a little play. So that's your 6 and your 8 mil pearls. I'm also using the 6 and the 8 mil... Um, what are they called? Spar sparkle spacers, I think they are. I'm trying to give them the right name. Um, but they are all in the Facebook category on the website. So that is my keychain. So that's a really nice way to use the roses. So um, that's the three point rose and that's a pound. So I think that's amazing value for money. You just need your little connector for your keychain. My keys are going to go on that after the video. So onto our necklace, we've got the lovely um, larger rose, so the 42 mil rose. And then we've attached our link at the top, link at the bottom, just to give it that little flush finish for our necklace. And then we will start threading on. So I'm going to take a length of tiger tail. Got my tiger tail wire here. I'm just going to do 
a little bit away from the spool and click that in. So you can always keep your wires on the spool. If you don't know how much you want to use, just connect it into the little links and that's going to keep it for you. Um, I'm going to use uh, collots and crimp beads to finish it off afterwards, just like Kitty showed you in the video the other day. Um, but we'll do it again for this one so that you can have a little look. And then I'm just going to mix up between the spacers and the pearls. So I think I'm going to start in the middle. So I'm actually going to thread this one straight on. And then I'm going to use my smaller pearls as little spacer beads. And the great thing is, I mean, I haven't, I haven't pre-designed this. I am just doing this as we go. The really nice thing is that you can start to play with your materials. So I'm using the smaller ones so that it will sit with the rows in there nicely. Um, start playing with your materials as you go, because at the end of the day, there is no right or wrong. You can actually just take all of the beads that you want to use and start designing. At the end of the day, you're just threading them on. So it's really nice and simple. I think what I'm gonna do is do a small pearl, a large pearl, and a small pearl, just to create those nice little clusters of detail. And then we'll bring in a spacer. I think that's nice. Or does the spacer look nicer next to a larger pearl? So this is what Kitty and I will do when we design kits for you guys to make. We kind of make, that's better. That's gonna sit nicely next to a large one. Um, we sit and design and chop and change colors, shapes, sizes, that's nice. Um, so that we, we kind of do the, the harder bit for you, if you like. Um, so this is the designing process. You just sit and have a little play. What will make the beads work? to the best of their ability. How do you really showcase them so that they look as special as they can? So can you see now, by doing this, I'm just giving myself that little introduction of the spaces that will match the rows. And then I'm also making the points of interest by alternating between the larger pearls and the smaller pearls. So I don't think I'm gonna use these ones. They're a bit too dark. I'm sorry, I haven't got my other light on today. Um, my, I hope it's not too dark for you. Let me bring this down a bit. Um, if I bring it up, it's probably a bit lighter. Um, the other plug is upstairs. I had to use it to uh, charge my phone last night and then I forgot to grab it this morning. Um, so what have you all been up to? I haven't seen you since Thursday. I've had a really busy couple of days. We painted a couple of bedrooms yesterday, which was nice. Been getting on with DIY. Um, I also ordered, so... I don't know um, if you follow my Sarah Millsop uh, Facebook page. I put um, uh, a picture up there a few weeks ago. John and Beth made a swing to sit in our blossom tree. And I ordered one of these macrame swing seats. So um, it's just made out of ropes, but it's um, it came yesterday and it's hanging in the tree. It looks absolutely beautiful. I'm going to sit out there later and clear some of my emails if... Um, if the wind dies down, otherwise you spin around in it too much. Um, Jane says, I would put a seed bead in between to make it more interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Seed beads in between these, especially if you have a silver lined seed bead, that would be absolutely gorgeous. It's also gonna make it a little bit more fluid as well. So that's it, exactly. You take your favorite materials that you like to work with, um, seed beads for a bit of interest as well, bit of, um, extra dimension it would make it more fluid sorry hitting the camera it would make it more fluid and just give you that little extra sparkle if you used a silver lined as well um if i knew i could lay my hands on them quickly i would do that too um so you can see the resin sparkler beads match perfectly to your resin roses i'm just going to add a couple more on here and then we will do the other side as well it's really nice and simple. I've still got my tiger tail attached to um, the spool. So all I'm going to do is make the length of necklace that I need on this side. And then we will be able to cut the wire uh, just before we use it. So there's no wastage either. So you can actually attach on your collot and crimp bead, which we will do on this side. 
and then we'll be able to finish it off. Has anyone been making the um, crochet necklace that we did? I know um, Jane sent me a lovely picture. I've seen the pictures that um, um, everyone's been putting on the handmade group. So we've got the totally handmade group. There's about 1,300 of you in there now which is amazing um, and everybody shares their pictures of their makes whether it's from the videos that we've been doing on Facebook um, something getting you through lockdown which is really nice um, just loads of like-minded people on there sharing their inspiration in the pictures but I love um, seeing when you've been making what we've been making in the video as well so watching the video and then going on and, and making your own little designs and your own takes on it as well which is great I'm just going to quickly size this up to my neck we'll do one more one more cluster um so smaller bead and i'm going to finish it do you know what i completely did i change the pattern no i didn't change the pattern um i'm going to finish it on a small pearl so i'm just going to give it i'm not going to use the spaces because i don't want to waste them up at the back i'm just going to finish on a small pearl like so and then we're ready to attach it on so we've got our collots now um when kitty did this the other day there was a lot of talk about uh, different collots as well and actually i wanted to grab one to show you bear with me one sec Um, I wanted to show you the two different collots because some of you were saying that um, they come apart really easily. So the collots that we are using are the ones with the loops on them. So if you have a look here, it already has closed loops, top and bottom. You have the dome, which will encase the uh, crimp bead and then you have the hole on the hinge as well but having these loops on it so on the website these are called collots with loops um, they are super secure so if you're using larger beads glass beads heavy beads you're going to add pendants on and such like or if you've got small kids um, because a lot of the time they'll put their arms around your neck um, get caught on a necklace and they undo so these are the other ones so you can see that this only has a loop on one side of your collot, which therefore means it can open, uh, which will mean that this connector, uh, connector will open up and your necklace will unthread. So I'm gonna use the ones with the loops so that they are nice and secure. So for anyone asking in the video the other day, that is the difference between the two. These ones are lovely and secure. Gonna take a couple of crimp beads and then we're gonna thread on our collot. So up through the very middle of that hinge, you can see there is the hole in there. That's going to add on. Oh my goodness, my green thumb is ridiculous, doesn't it? Looks like I'm turning into the Hulk. Um, I think the thing is, when when you know you're doing telly, you kind of you, you keep your hands. Yeah, I'm very conscious of what I do. I should probably start wearing gloves, shouldn't I? I forget that I'm doing these videos so regularly. <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to take two of my crimp beads and you can see now if you hold them loosely in between your pliers you can move them up and down. So I'm just going to position it towards the end and squash that crimp like so just using my flat nose pliers and then I will also take this one up as high as it will go towards that first crimp and I'm going to squash that as well. Then I'll be able to cut off any of that tail that I think will be visible, so a tiny little bit. Very often I will um, hook these back over on itself as well, um, but we'll do it this way for now because this is what your instructions will show you. And now that is the end of my necklace, ready to go straight on. And then we will bring that all the way to the end and this will now attach on to our, let me move it up, onto our clasp. Okay, so really nice and simple. And then we will just replicate that on the other side. So I'm gonna cut my tiger tail from my spool now. Measure that up, make sure I've got enough. Just leave a tiny little bit for any extras if needs be. And then I can replicate this pattern on the other side. And keep these crimp beads because I'll need those in a minute. Lovely. And then we're gonna have our nice little necklace. So um, we will just attach our clasp using a jump ring. I'm just gonna replicate this pattern now. So I've got my six mil pearls. Let's 
move these over. I, I'm going to show you my desk in a minute because the amount of roses we've got here, the, the value for money in these bundles is phenomenal. Um, so you've got all of your pearls in your two sizes and then these resin um, spacers are just going to give you a beautiful finish in between them and they pretty much marry up to all of the colours of your pearls as well. So the advantage of stringing onto tiger tail like this is because we're using um, heavier beads. So we've got our glass pearls. We're also gonna use the spacers. Tiger tail you can actually use like a needle itself. Um, so it's, it's several strands of wire, all woven uh, together. Hold on one second, I just wanna make sure that another large pearl um all woven together and they've got a nylon coating so they're great to use for things like crystals as well um so if you ever get any of the beads that have like rougher edges not necessary with these but if you're using things like bicones sometimes stringing them on um if it's just going to be a strung necklace you would use tiger tail for it and that is why we would use our crimps and our collops to finish as well uh, gwen says i made the bottom man and now lots of people want them I think you mean the button man don't you gwen <laughs> love it um yeah the button men have been super popular um kitty and christopher were making um the little photo pendants yesterday as well so every saturday kitty does like a mother and child um make along so that you can get crafting with the kids christopher came up with these button men um which have been um super popular we've had so many of you um posting pictures of them that you've been making it's really lovely to see uh all the different poses that you put them in. It's absolutely hilarious. Robert and his wife sent us an email um, and they labelled them all up. We had like a ballerina. Um, there was, oh gosh, what else was there? There were so, ma so many different poses. It was fantastic. Um, okay, so I've actually nearly finished this necklace. As you can see, it comes together really quickly. I just need to add on the pearl. And then we'll finish it off. Now he wants to do a galaxy bracelet. Oh, I don't even know what that is. Sounds interesting. Get him on that one, Kitty. Um, the pearl bundle is great value for money, Lucy's saying. Yeah, it really is. So you're going to get, I mean, there, there are hundreds, if not thousands of beads in there because you've got uh, 40 strands, 20 colors. You'll get your six and your eight mils so that you can really beautifully graduate them as well all in matching colours with your resin flowers for today as well. I just need a few of my larger piles. Oh, you heard that, didn't you? They were flying. Um, as you can see, when you've got details like this, it doesn't have to be, oh, it's modelled on the solar system. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, let's do those. Um... When you have um, features in your necklace like these, um, pretty much like I was saying with the crochet necklace that we were making on Thursday, um, you don't need to use difficult materials. Uh, sorry, you don't need to use difficult techniques because the materials just talk for themselves. So you've got really beautiful beads that will create lovely detail without much effort. Um, what size are the pearls and the name of the spacers? I missed the beginning of the video. So these are our resin sparkler spacers. We've also got the um, eight mil pearls and the six mil pearls. They are all on offer today. You get 40 strands, 20 colors, six and eight mil. They're normally 50 pounds, but they're 34.99 today. Um, the link is in the description to the video, but also Kitty has tagged it in the um, the video itself as well so if you scroll through you'll be able to find those um, and then our roses are the main feature so they uh, mix with your sparkler beads we've got the 42 mil rose which has connectors top and bottom and then we also have the 40 mil three point roses and they have connectors on each point okay so i'm just going to make sure that i marry up my necklace let's see how much more i've got to do just two more spaces 
and then we're done and then we can finish it off and pop our clasp on oh lots of people saying they can't wait to see uh christopher's video using the sparkle um sparkle spaces that's what i'm using using the solar system that would be amazing i think it's so good to get your kids involved in in your craft as well Although at this rate, I think Christopher's going to be taking over the business. He loves doing the videos, which is really nice. It must be lovely for Kitty to have them involved. Okay, I think that's my last one. So all I'm doing is uh, lying them next to each other, marrying them up, and then I'm going to do a large pearl, a smaller one. We'll need one more large one. Pick one up from the floor. So the dogs don't get those. A uh, large one and a small one. And then we'll add our crimp on. And then that's it. Our necklace is complete. Really nice and simple. Very easy design. But because we've got the features of the spacers and our rose pendant, we've learnt uh, using the clots, the crimp beads, the wrapped loops. And you've still got beautiful detail in there. And... Uh, just like I think it was Jane suggested, you could also even use um, some seed beads in there to create that dimension. So to finish it off and make sure that there are no gaps in any of your beads, we're going to pop on the crimp, uh, sorry, the collot, then two of my crimp beads. And then what we're going to do, if I move you out a little bit further so you can see the desk a bit more, let's move these all out. Thread those crimps back on. There we go. So, got that down at the bottom. So remember, we started in the middle, didn't we? So I'm just gonna make sure there are no gaps in between any of my beads. So I'm just going to hold my wire with my pliers and I'm gonna push everything on. Now with these, you don't wanna push it on so much that it goes rigid. Um, you want it to still have that beautiful fluidity. So no gaps, but also no puckering. That's really important because it's going to give you a much nicer and more professional looking finish. So you can see it's gone from puckering and quite rigid to I now have that lovely fluidity in it. But you still want it to be able to be secure in the right place. So then I'm holding on to my tiger tail wire. I'm just going to crush that crimp. I'm using my round nose pliers for my first one because it will get me, because I've got that point on there, I can get in really nice and neatly. I'll use the flat nosed for the top one because I can get in. And then again, we'll just use our flush cutters. Trim that top off and close the crimp cover, your collot, over like so. Then a little jump ring. Mm. I've buried them in all my pearls. I don't have a smaller one. I've got a larger. Ah, here they are. Um, and then we're going to attach on a clasp. So I've got a magnetic clasp somewhere. Here we go. And I'm going to add that on because it actually matches with the sparkle spaces really beautifully. Put on quite a large one because for the necklaces, it's easier to put on. So jump ring, twisting it open, one side into my clasp, one side into my collot. I'm actually just going to close that a little more so that my loops are married up and like I said these collots so these are the collots with loops these are going to give you a really nice secure finish that is not going to come undone and then we'll do the same thing on the other side twisting it open so there you go, you've got um, a good two, three different ways to use your roses. So I'd love to see if anyone would like to put them on the brooches. I was trying to find a brooch back this morning quickly before I started the video, but I couldn't. Um, I'm definitely going to turn one of them into a brooch. You've got a really nice, simple necklace, but a real statement piece with the roses. I'm going to pop my keys onto this one. And actually, what you could even do, if you had two of them, and actually, this is exactly what I'm going to do, you could even glue those together as well, so you've got double-sided. Um, because they are just resin, a little bit of glue on that back side, and you would be able to create something with dimension as well. My keys are going to go onto there. Um, 
Oh, the 20 pack of roses is sold out apparently. Oh, just gonna look at stock and if we can do a few more packs of the roses, uh, says Kitty. So some of the stocks have gone already. I did say you have to be quick. Um, we've got the beautiful pearls. We also have your resin spacers. And then with your roses, um, there is an offer of the 20 packs as you found, or they are a pound on their own. These are the beautiful sparkle spacers. I mean, look at those. This is just an amazing colour, that turquoise. Um, really hope you enjoyed it. It's just a simple technique, but it shows you that if you have the right components, you can make a real statement eye catcher piece um, without needing to know years worth of advanced techniques. It can be really nice and simple. Um, now, I am back with you tomorrow. We're going to be using the um, mermaid tubing, mermaid crystal tubing. Um, I can't remember its exact name. I know it's Mermaid. Um, and I'm going to be using Memory Wire. So if anyone is struggling with that, please do join me tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Happy Sunday. Um, hope the wind dies down and you might be able to get out there. Um, Emma says that their kit's available for the garden butterflies, still available as a kit. If you go on to the Facebook tutorial section on the website, you'll be able to do it by day. And you'll be able to find the um, butterfly um, mobile that the uh, Kitty and um, Christopher made. And if there are any kits, it will be in there for you. Um, lovely. Enjoy your Sunday. Have a lovely time. Um, we're going to go pick up my stepdaughter in a little while. Have her here for the week. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, get to do a bit more DIY, I think. And um, we painted her bedroom. She doesn't know. Um, so we finished that off. So that'll be a nice surprise for when she gets home. All right then, guys, take care. I will see you tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock on the Totally Beads Facebook page. Share your makes with us and take care. Love to you all.